I've often dealt with young people at church and I always like to do crafts because I haven't met a kid that didn't like to make something. And in these days when everything is multiple choice tests, the church can actually take up the slack and teach kids how to use their hands, which is just as important as being able to answer a multiple choice question. One of my favorites for the Thanksgiving time is to make these little pumpkins that can be table decorations and presents for their parents. See, look how cute. Little pumpkin. And I've had these about 10 years. And I put them out every Thanksgiving. And all, many, many, many children have made them over the years. And their parents were pleased to get them and put them out at, on their Thanksgiving table. So I want to show you how you do this. It usually takes two weeks, one week to make the pumpkin and another week to paint. And then that gives you plenty of warning to tell the parents that next week that the children should come wearing clothes or you have to get plenty of shirts to put over them so that they don't uh, mess them up and everything. What we need is some Sculpey. You can buy it at your craft store. For the Sunday school, I don't usually buy the finest grade Sculpey. This is a kind of clay it's not like Play-Doh. Play it doesn't stay soft or get hard when you... It stays... I've had this box for a couple years now, as long as I don't leave it in the garage. Um, it seems to stay pretty well, and it stays pliable. So I did put some in the garage, and that garage gets pretty hot in the summer, and that sculpey got hardened beyond repair because I think it got as hot as an oven. It was required to harden sculpey can be hardened in the oven. It comes in blocks like this and you take off a piece. And uh, the first thing you've got to get the kids to do is to squish it. And usually they're pretty happy to squish it. And it, at first it seems like you couldn't make it into anything. And you're going to have to uh, make sure that it doesn't just get yucky like that. It has to really get pliable and elastic. And so you have the inspection say, is that good enough? Is that good enough? and keep, actually, it's good for them to keep squeezing. It's kind of therapy. I have some here that I squished earlier. And you'll probably want to, after, when it gets really soft, and you'll probably want to make a practice one before you try to do it with kids, um, you want to make sure that you can make it into a smooth ball by just rolling the, the wad of Sculpey between your hands and making it into a round ball like that. If you can do that and you don't see any major cracks on it, then you've got it, got it smooth enough. Now you've got to have the kids pinch off a piece, put it aside to be the stem and one to be a leaf, because your pumpkin probably wants a leaf, and then roll it again. Now I usually bring toothpicks or sometimes paint brushes. This one's a little thick, but I tried to record before using a toothpick and it wasn't easy to see what I was doing so maybe I use the um, paintbrush here but I sometimes use toothpicks on the Sculpey to make the grooves on the pumpkin see if I can get this pumpkin up near you see it has grooves so it makes it look like a store-bought pumpkin and we want to put those grooves in there and we'll put the stem and leaf in later so you take your round ball that you've got. I, can't, I don't understand how this camera works. Take this round ball that you've got and imagine a north pole and a south pole. So I usually have the kids mark it with the toothpick on the top and then turn it completely over and mark it on the bottom. And then you start on one of the poles and put the point of the sculpt the toothpick there and trace it around till it hits the south pole. And you can tap it if I pulled up a piece of Sculpey there. So I get this groove. Let's see if I can see if you can see it. Got this groove on this pumpkin. And I go over about a half an inch at the equator, but starting at the north pole again and go like this again and again and again and if it's a little off it doesn't really matter because we're going to put a stem 
on this pumpkin anyway. So you're just sort of mimicking the way pumpkins grow with those grooves on the side. They don't have to be perfect. We just get those grooves in there, if you can see that. And if you want to, you, you know, you can flatten it down a little bit. Maybe the pumpkin is not that round. You might want to make them a little flatter so that it looks like a pumpkin. Now you have to make a stem. So you probably want to take your toothpick and poke it in the what's going to be the top and make a little little hole because we want to now make a little stem and fortunately stems don't have to be that good either. Make a little ball with it and then flatten the top down and make it a little bit like a cone or something. Just a little thing like that. And stick it in the top to become the top of the pumpkin. You don't have to put on a leaf. See this one, finished one, doesn't have a leaf. But some of the kids will want to put a leaf in there. So you might want to take the stem out and ma make a little leaf, if, especially if some of the kids show some inclination to having a little manual dexterity. Make them make a little flat pointed thing and stick it into the hole before they put in their little stem. Then you bake, and if, if everything gets crooked, that doesn't matter because pumpkins are rarely perfect. Uh, if that gets a, a little bit off center, if you want to put two little leaves, you can. But what's going to happen is you're going to bake this in your regular oven. At this point, I usually brought out a cookie sheet with some aluminum foil on it, and I would have the kids use the toothpick and write their name on the or dent in the aluminum foil where they're going to set their pumpkin because nothing is more frustrating to a kid believe me i remember than to do put your heart into some work and next week get back somebody else's project to finish you want to let them finish their own it you might not think that they'll notice but they will i remember i had to do a christmas ornament that wasn't mine when i was about in fourth grade and it bothered me till now. Anyway, so we want to make sure they get their own back. So we've got this, and you're going to bake it. If you really wanted to finish this week, you should bring, could bring a toaster oven, and you could bake it at the beginning of your Bible story or whatever, and then have your story, and then bring out the paints. When I go to have these painted, I usually um, use acrylic paints. For some kids, they're not allowed to do that because it on their clothes and it's hard to get out and you have to be very careful that they don't get any on your clothes and if they do you've got to get it out right away and I like to put a little gloss polymer medium in with it to give it this shiny effect if you just some of the little acrylic paints or craft paints don't aren't shiny so I always think it looks better with a little shine to it and if if you if your paint doesn't have the shine you can add it with gloss polymer medium See, this one's, I must have not had any available. It doesn't look quite as good that year. But they still were kind of presentable. I have a lot of them here, because every year I made, we, when it came up to Thanksgiving, we'd be making these, and I've made some to show the kids. And I'm going to put this little container here to show you some of them. These were all made at different times, and some were made by kids that were helping me, some by my daughter, and uh, I still put them out every year around Thanksgiving. I just stole them from my table, actually. Now, I always like to make something that all the kids can be proud of, and then I usually let them have another piece of Sculpey that they can do with what they like, because we want to and encourage the creativity. Here's all my little pumpkin patch. Look how cute they are. And I have some Pilgrim salt and pepper shakers that they don't make anymore, but I put the little Pilgrim people next to these, and it looks like they were made for each other. They were. One year, I, you know, like I said, I've given out extra Sculpey for kids to make whatever they want, and then I cook that in the oven and make it hard, too. But, and my daughter will probably kill me. But right here... I gave an extra piece to my daughter, and she 
made this little cornucopia with the little fruit inside of it and did all of the markings on the cornucopias. She made a lot of these over the years with and put a little tiny pumpkin in there and then made pears and bananas and we cook those and uh, I think they turned out very nice too. But that was, I've never made the cornucopia and all these things inside of it. But she, she did that. She took, took the skill that I was trying to teach and added to it. And you want to always give children the chance to do that. So if you can't think of something to do for Thanksgiving, this is kind of a nice craft. And the kids are proud of it when they make their pumpkin and they're glad to take it home to give to their parents. Thanks. I hope you'll try it. Bye. Well, I just looked at that video and I saw that you couldn't see what I was doing when I did the groove, so I thought I'd give you an addendum. So here's this ball that I've re-squished. And then I usually flatten it a little bit because you don't really want it to be like a balloon. You want it to be more squishy. And you put a north pole, mark a north pole, turn that over, mark the south pole, and now here's the part I, want, I you couldn't see because my hands were out of the way. Put the toothpick up at the top of the North Pole and we're not going to draw the groove. You're just going to, on the surface of it, pull this down, rotate around like that till you get to the South Pole. See, I didn't pick up the toothpick or pretend to be scoring it or anything. In the top, rotate it around to the bottom. Turn, move it a little bit, rotate it around to the bottom. North pole, rotate it around to the bottom. North pole, rotate it around to the bottom. North pole, rotate it down to the bottom. If the kid doesn't like it, you see he can do it over again. It doesn't take that long. And if the poles don't meet, match, it's not going to matter because you're going to put a hole in the center here where you're going to put the stem and it's going to be close enough. And once it's painted, it's going to look like it was something that you bought as a gift. And the parents are going to be astounded that their kid made it. And the kid's going to be proud that he made something that his parents liked. So try it. Have fun.